Let's experiment tonight. Let's try this. Yes. This is going to be a fucking great show. <laughs> Nothing can go wrong. They're out there in office chairs. <laughs> They've got chicken fingers in baskets. There's no music playing. They're, we're in Arlington. We're 10 minutes from the White House. I got a camera on my head. I don't understand how anything could possibly go wrong. Hello, Arlington. Guess what? I've got very good news. Harmontown is now in session. Welcome to the Arlington Draft House. Won't you please welcome the mayor of Harmontown, Dan Harmon. camera on my head. Thank you, Arlington. <laughs> Crane shot! <laughs> Wait, we have a camera on a microphone? Yeah. There that, are cameras that... on, uh, there's a camera on this camera, Jeff. <laughs> this show got really meta all of a sudden. Yeah. It's, it's meta meta. Uh, double double uh, meta meta cheese. Uh, uh, weird, weird, weird. I there's, guarantee you. There's, weird. there's nothing on that shot right now. <laughs> Whoa! It's, it's not going to be in the movie. Well, let's get let, let's give him the crane shot. Like, 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 let's we'll skip to the end of the show where I'm like, like, like. Here, I'll. Uh, uh, well, I guess uh, I guess that guy got murdered. Um, Arlington style. Since that made. Yeah. <laughs> and if I saw a movie where two people said that and then the camera went. Uh, for those of you listening, we're doing a bunch of physical things that you're not involved with. <laughs> but that doesn't matter because the most important 300 people are here. <laughs> 10 minutes from the front door of the forces that oppress us. Fuck these guys. You mean, you mean Washington, D.C.? Yeah, man. We're, aren't we like 10 minutes from the White House? I, I don't know. Yeah. 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 With, with traffic, maybe 18? There's no traffic? There's no traffic? You, 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 you guys in this town, you, you, you want to talk about politics tonight, right? Like, no, you love it. That's why you live here. You want to you talk about politics. Are you going to wear that camera on your head the whole show? No, 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 once the red light goes out, it means we're out of... Uh, what do you call it, film now, or footage? iCloud, What's, whatever's, whatever's in there, it'll run out. I'll take it off pretty soon. Aren't you concerned about like brain cancer? You got a thing in your head. I'm getting kind of a high off of the reduced blood flow. <laughs> it's sort of a perfect thing. D like Dan a, is wearing, uh, lean, lean forward, Dan, and show them what can only be described as a jock strap uh, on your head. <laughs> it's, it's like a biker's helmet without the protection. And, and, uh, all the capacity to film your impending doom. Let's do an experiment. Let's get Spencer out here immediately. All right. Oh, shit. We've never done it. Damn. Oh, we've never. Hang on, Spencer. Wait, wait, till you... oh, shit, Spencer. Spencer. <laughs> we've never brought him up this earlier. It's like in chess, bringing the queen out too early. They warn you not to bring your queen out too early in chess, Dan. You see a four-armed Spencer emerge from the bushes. <laughs> He has an apple sweatshirt on and a full beard, full of beardness. He takes his seat way too early in the show. He is Spencer. Thank you for joining us, Spencer. Spencer. Thanks. Again, for, for those of you that possibly don't know who Spencer is, Spencer is our dungeon master we've been traveling with. Uh, and at some point in the show, we play, uh, we play Dungeons and Dragons with Spencer, who is a Truly been a wonderful companion on the road. Thank and, you. And, and an indispensable Spencer. Uh, dispensable? It doesn't matter. To avoid the don't, don't. Can, we, can, can I get more plosives with my poop? Pop it. Poop. Can we turn my mic down? Can we get a, a winter box and a windscreen for Jeff? Yeah, yeah. all these box. Thank you. I'm a 
of town is the place to be. Saw your mama with an ant and a bee. Insect colony. I saw your mama motherfucking. All right, all right. That was a gibberish. Confession: A couple of those last words weren't real words. <laughs> but the the, uh, the uh, art form of it is that's how insects talk. That was trophallaxis. That was a vomit drop. Insect rap. <laughs> how about a real rap? Here in Arlington? Oh, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Yo, yo, Arlington. Oh, yo, yo, yo. Place to be in a town I don't know. Fuck your mama in the rain and the snow. I'm like a mailman, do it in weathers. All, I fucked your mama with Carl Weathers. Okay, you're not ready yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, 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 let me warm up. We, we just met these people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. We, we predicted backstage, we, we always do this. We're like, there, there's a potential this will be a weird show. Like, we don't know. Like, like there's a weird seating thing. For those of you in podcast land, we've got it's a, it's a perfect storm of comfort and alienation. <laughs> We're looking at everybody her. here as their own Captain Picard. They yeah. yeah, every. <laughs> <laughs> They're all in this beautiful. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> They're all in great reclining leather thrones. <laughs> single audience member of the Arlington Draft House gets a kept like Enterprise bridge captain's yeah. chair. And, and, and the which, fear, is, which is fantastic. And the fear of the sea. The Expendables 2. Uh, it's, a, it's a great place to watch a Quentin Tarantino yeah, movie. Yeah. It might be a horrible place to interact with me. Like, you guys are all... You, uh, you seem more powerful than me. <laughs> any, any one of you can, uh, can tell us whether or not to engage. <laughs> <laughs> They've all engaged in baskets of fries. Like, this is the height of comfort. Literally. People have plates in front of them, and there's nachos and quesadillas coming up. Plates. 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 Plosives. Plosives. My point screen. Occupation zero. P hero. With a little audio humor for you. Uh, yeah, everyone is in a is in a state of the art IKEA rolling office chair, <laughs> and, they, and every two people has a a wonderful formica table full loaded with the appetizers and beverages of their choices. And, and I just feel like Dan, you, uh, we, we might be the only comedy show to ever oh, uh, be the headliner for a Twilight movie. <laughs> Was anyone here? Did anyone have to come in, and watch a Twilight movie, and then leave and come who, who, back? Who was here and watched Twilight and came back for us? Thank you. <laughs> nice. Thank you, John, for that. Okay, I, I, I'm not joking. I've never seen a Twilight. I don't know what a Twilight. I mean, I know what Twilight is. I know it's the sort of thing between light and night. But uh, uh, is it is it vampires or or, or chupacabras or uh, werewolves? It's vampires. Huh? Vampires and werewolves? There's, there's a few werewolves, yeah. But, but they're like Native Americans. <laughs> Wait, the, the werewolves are like Native Americans? Yeah, they're not true. They, they're not afflicted by like canthropy. They're Native Americans who are more. They can shape shift into these CG wolf creatures. In a world where you notice has no hiding place. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, Arlington Draft House, number one in accommodations for the talent coming through. I will say that, right? We're not going to offend anybody with saying that. Certainly. We, we got ushered in here, and the guy whose job it is to kick your ass if you get out of line is, is also going to bring you chicken fingers. <laughs> and he'll do both with equal facility, I believe. <laughs> and, with, and with equal pride in his job. Was, I kept going, like, I don't... When we were asked before the show by, by a lovely guy named Jesse, he's like, if it, uh, let me know if like, anybody in the audience gets too uh, wild and woolly or too interactive, you know, like, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. Like, if we call your name out, Jesse, that yeah, means... Yeah, and only if we call your name out. Yeah. Otherwise, Je Jesse, uh, don't... don't uh, <laughs> he's, he's not Beetlejuice. We have, if I say his <laughs> name... What if Jesse turned out to be the problem? What if, what if it was just... What if, what if as soon as he... It's like, okay, they started the show, and then he goes in the back, and he ties his arm off, and he like, shoots a smack. Secu special security smack. It's all an old black bag that says security on it. And then, he, and then he like comes out here, and he's like, what did you shoot the fuck up? You're not safe enough. Uh, yeah, 
yeah, so uh, first in the combinations of the talent, I got, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna, I got a belly full of deep fried chicken fingers. This is our, this is our first show on, this is day, what, eight? Okay. I think it's, our, it's not day eight, but it's our eighth show in, I think, in nine days. This is our only show where we didn't have a hotel. We, our, our tour bus is like a block and a half away, and we, uh, we, we landed at 5 o'clock p.m. It's now 10 or so, 30 p.m. And uh, we just like got dressed on the bus and been wandering uh, Columbia Pike, wherever the fuck we are. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, this is the least uh, together you're gonna see us. Oh, I thought Dan, you look pretty good. You woke up today. You look like uh, like the last rose of summer, man. <laughs> your hair was all over the map. You were shirking your Fox uh, TV show responsibilities. Oh uh, yeah, I'm definitely fired from Fox. So. <laughs> like, like this tonight was the last night I had a chance to finish my Fox pilot. But I turned in my CBS one. So the great news for community fans is. Uh, uh, that I, I'll, I'll be the next Big Bang Theory. <laughs> You'll love it. But I have an Adult Swim show, and maybe the Fox thing over. If you're, if you're listening to this and you work at Fox, I'm very sorry, but I've, I've found a new job as a, as a weird traveling uh, guy without an act. Uh, Do you think that you're actually in real trouble with Fox? No, not trouble. You're never in trouble. Uh, you're just, you're just, you know, like, 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 nobody ever gets mad at you. Nobody ever says you're a dick. Nobody ever says you're fired. Nobody ever says, like, you're late. Like, like, they just, they just call you and they smile and they say, oh, I just want to help you out, but uh, we can help you out more now than later. <laughs> uh, and I think that, yeah, like, this weekend, I think Fox is reading scripts that they're going to make the decision to pull the trigger on. So if, t if sometime between now and tomorrow morning I could write, I don't know, somewhere between 11 and 30 pages of, uh, <laughs> of a group of misfits uh, finding each other in an unlikely family. Uh, I, which I've done before. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. Uh, if that happens, then I, oh, I might have a small rhyme, but uh, I, you know, otherwise it might, they'll slow roll it, as they say. You know, it'll be, it won't be this fall season, it'll be. I don't want to talk, Jen, it's depressing. So Spencer, I heard you just passed Brownie today, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can't edit it out. His parents don't know. Oh, shit. Well, we'll edit it out. We'll edit it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you Nobody doing? texts I'm Spencer's doing great. parents and tell them he gets high. <laughs> and especially don't tell them he's higher than he's ever been in his life. Don't, don't call them either. <laughs> oh, Spencer. He had, a, he had an accident with an edible. It was, it was on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, that was at 9 a.m. today, right? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> hey! He's a, a one-man burning man. Right <laughs> he is... Spencer seems to have eaten an edible. You have partaken of a, a potion that seems to be having a magical effect on you. Gripped by haziness and lethargy, he reached for the Cheetos. <laughs> Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, he's still got it. He's still got it. So, one of the, the guys making the documentary, we were at this Thai food restaurant, and one of them said, Hey, are you all right? And he's like, Yeah, I'm fine. And I said, Are you going to be able to judge him after that? And he said, Yeah, uh, give me the name of a monster. <laughs> and, and someone said, Werewolf. And he said, Leaping from the bushes, its arms raised in aggression and protest. The werewolf started. And I was like, Yeah, I like, turned it on and off. Should, should we try it out right now? Should, uh, let's, let's, let's try it. Try it. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Spencer, uh, any, anyone from the audience, uh, do you have a, think of a, not, not a real monster, make up a new monster, like a, something out of your own imagination. The what? The Tooth Beast. Spencer, the Tooth Beast. You hear the gnashing and grinding of ivory against ivory. I'm gonna fucking die. I'm gonna die. Should I even go on at that point? Or yeah, no, no, you should. I mean, you could or you couldn't, it doesn't matter. I, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die of happiness. You hear the gnashing and gnashing of ivory. Spencer, um, I. Oh I, was, I was pretty sure I loved you the moment we met you at Now what do you and, 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 and it's, it's, it's grown, grown and grown by, you know, a very, you know, logical, ge geometrical, you know, line. That's but what we call a direct correlation. <laughs> That's just the <laughs> 
You're only making it more exponential. <laughs> the your, the, your curve gets parabolic as it exponentializes <laughs> into the hazy mist of mathematical curvature. As, as X becomes <laughs> closer to Y. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't even do it. I I it. It's like right on the top, like Dan and I, we both have speech impediments. Uh, like Dan goes, I, 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 and I, I start, I start, so I, 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 I start sentences a bunch of times, like too. And I have a lot of you, you have the Hugh Grant, I have the uh, Woody Allen, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Jimmy Stewart, <laughs> Hugh Grant uh, versus Woody Allen. But Spencer, you speak so distinctly. Uh, like, there's no stuttering. There's no ums or ers or uhs or whatever. It's just it's, it's very uh, articulate, very specific, very precise. If you say so. <laughs> I, 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 I do. Can we unveil my 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 partial bridge to the chicken noodle dick uh, song? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know if Jeff approves of it yet, but this is what I came up with. I, 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 I. <laughs> Here I am. I'm a man. Oh, shit. Oh, 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 yeah, we're, are we starting to talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starting okay. to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who does not know the chicken noodle dick song? So don't, don't raise your hands. Clap, clap. It's dark out there. There are a lot of there. Lack of knowledge. Uh, so I uh, have. Uh, I have a Pringles dick song. I was singing some of my dick song. And the tour bus is generally about holding anything up to your dick and then, and then singing the ballad of a person whose dick is now another thing. So Dan and I went through, uh, for the whole, actually, most of the bus on the tour bus went through a bunch of different objects and items. And we finally gave Dan a chicken noodle can, uh, pro Progresso Light Chicken Noodle Soup, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, we cobbled together a pretty good song. I don't know the bridge you're talking about. Well, I'll do, I'll do it myself. Okay, are we starting from the top? Yeah, start from the top, and then okay. I'm going to add my bridge. I want, to, I want this song to get longer and longer and more spiritual as we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, and, and I'll cheat you guys when I start clapping. Here I am. I ain't got a dick. I got a chicken noodle can all my life. I've been put in the scans, I'm a chicken noodle wife. Chicken noodle god, come down from the mountain. Chicken noodle man, you gotta work all day. Chicken noodle man, you gotta cross the river Jordan. Feed the devil soup until you go away. Soup to the bowl, bowl to the spoon. Spoon to the mouth, you're gonna get well soon. That's all I got. Soup to the bowl, bowl to the spoon. Spoon to the mouth, you're gonna get well soon. It's not really a bread. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't yeah. know what it is. We, we need a musician to write us like we need to move to like a minor key. I don't know what it is, no, nor did the people who built our nation's railroads. Like, they didn't go to music college. They went by instinct and God. Like, God went through them. When you, when you break a man down to his fundamentals, he becomes Beethoven. Right. Like, they didn't need to know, oh, oh, uh, is, it, is it the bridge or the, or the chorus? I don't fucking know. Like, put, put another fucking uh, uh, railroad uh, uh, hinge in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the rail, 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 rail pocket. Uh, uh, Spencer, uh, railroad monster. You hear the sound of far off distance. Steam <laughs> rises to the east. You hear the horrendous grinding of teeth. And then you see half man, half locomotive, all monster. He's fucking so He's a national treasure. He's a national, he's a national treasure whose parents dropped him off at the bus. I, 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 I have a picture of Spencer and his mom and dad. And, uh, they look like our age. Yeah, of course. And they're like older than you guys. Yeah, barely. Your mom was in my chemistry class. <laughs> my mom's like 20 years older than you. It still it doesn't matter. What's their secret, Spencer? Why do your parents look so youthful? Um, they drain the souls of other people. <laughs> Uh, uh, Spencer Parent Monsters. Yeah, the Parent Monster. Opening the door to your room, you quickly turn off your computer screen. <laughs> I, 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 
Why are we up here and why are you back there? This whole thing is that's fucking what I, backwards. That's what I just thought. Is like tonight, the, 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 that's what's important about tonight. I officially seed the show to Spencer. Yeah, I do. I no longer like, like, like. Jeez yeah. Louise. Oh man. That, that, that's, a, that's a superpower. Uh, you know, there was a conversation on the tour bus, and Dan is busy, like, you know, sitting in the front section, uh, which I, I call the, 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 the forecastle of, of, of our tour bus. The forecastle, forecastle. It's, it's called forecastle. Any sailors on there? Yeah, there's a, there's a, yeah, there's a couple of sailors. That's yeah. safe to assume. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it is our nation's capital. <laughs> Maryland, there might be some midshipmen out there, right? Of yeah. course, there usually is. Any bachelorette parties? <laughs> no, it's it's Armenians. They, they it's, yeah. it's, it's, yacht. He loves his yacht. Yacht, <laughs> Spencer, Spencer, <laughs> yacht monster. Off the port back, <laughs> you see a spout of rising water. I don't know, that's all I got in that time. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. Freestyle free yeah. DM. I, I'm pretty sure that was Moby Dick, but that's still, that's still. <laughs> Yeah, you see a hum like a snow hill. There she blows. Quick, quick, cried. What I'm telling you about how knots work. Um, you know, that was just I think I know how they work. I just don't know how to time any of them. I think they all work on the principle of making rope hard to pull. Yeah. He, was, he was making a joke about Moby Dick, which most of it is about the minutiae of, you know, of, of being aboard a ship. Yeah, read a book, people. <laughs> a literacy monster. You see it stumbling toward you. <laughs> it looks at the sign standing in front of you. It falls into the pit that is clearly labeled. <laughs> But this is where we reveal that this whole thing has been a ruse. That you and I are going to leave the stage, like we're going to pretend, like, oh, we're demoralized, we're going to leave. And then Spencer's going to leave and come out and dress like Dolly Parton, and he's going to sing a song, and then you're going to find out he can tap dance, so you can do anything. And then the usurpation will be complete. <laughs> Oh, what was the what was the what was the song you said I couldn't I couldn't but was it what was the vaporized vaporized banana chips what no uh, gasified banana gasified bananas gasified banana never mind <laughs> all right forget it uh uh, uh, Arling, uh some Arlington facts Jeff you don't have, okay let's hear them uh, Dan, Dan boasts of his ability to while, while he's shirking his responsibilities for a screenplay or his uh, TV show scripts uh, he Wikipedia is the talent that he just dropped into. Yeah. So let's hear what you got, Dan. Jeff, did you know that Arlington, Virginia is the rape state? <laughs> so called by uh, Senator Joseph McCarthy in 1910, who was then six years old and had been raped by his own mother. <laughs> who, let me finish, invented the typewriter. <laughs> Fascinating historical. Uh, <laughs> what a legacy! Yeah. I mean, what a, a lot, lot of shit went down here. Career. Uh, Virginia was the 17th state to leave the union and the 14th state to join uh, the union, uh, uh, there, thereby creating a time paradox in which it fought itself in 1920, uh, which resulted in the development of copper wire uh, and, and, and the telephone. And a typewriter, <laughs> and marshmallow cream, and license plates, and the movie Jaws was shot here. And, <laughs> and, and the I didn't I didn't look at anything else. And and, uh, and the the uh, they lead the nation in eternal flame technology. Yes. You guys. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of yes. Cemetery cemetery culture here is more advanced than, <laughs> than ancient Maya and uh, Aztecia combined. Uh, the word Aztecia was invented here by uh, Carl Reiner in 1940. Uh, uh, Thomas Edison uh, 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 choked uh, to death here on a hunker. Uh, and that's where he got the idea. 
Virginia for the flux capacitor. <laughs> Uh, Virginia was originally uh, non-Virginia, uh, but they felt the name was too uh, reggae, so it changed to Virginia. And who do you like better, Virginia, West Virginia, or East Virginia? Uh, I, I, you know, I think out of all my favorites is Mega Virginia. <laughs> The, 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 the secret Virginia developed by NASA scientists that is in geosynchronous orbit with the other five Virginias. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, watch it down in all of you. How many of you out here tonight are from Virginia? Uh, what, what, question for you guys What is Virginia? Is it a county? A state? It's a state. Okay. Uh, okay. Don't get snippy. <laughs> I've been everywhere. I'm like an astronaut now. I'm, I'm walking in here with a swagger. I don't, even, I don't even know where I am. Uh, no, we're uh, ten minutes from the White House. Let's let's let's, let's scream something out, Jeff. We're tired of your bullshit. Why is it gonna be white? <laughs> Take my shoes off every time I go through the airport. Stupid. How many, how many, how many 9-11s have you stopped? With shoes. With shoe absence. Well, for, for all we know, uh, well, no, but for all we know, none. We, and we do know. Because every time they stop one, they go, he had a thing in his shoe! He had a thing in his shoe! They get excited about it. But, but if somebody else blew up some heavy shit, they wouldn't call that a 9-11. They'd probably call it whatever date that happened. They'd call it a 414 or something. They'd call it either 912 or 1011. Wouldn't they? What if, what if it happened in the spring? <laughs> oh, oh, September. Oh, I just got that. I just got that. I thought it was like 911. <laughs> you know, every day since I was like in middle school, you loved me. <laughs> Come to me. <laughs> no, I look at the clock. I was like, I was, I was very young, and I, I, I see nine. 11 on a clock once or twice a day. It's constant. I can wake up out of sleep and pick up my phone and look at it, 9-11. Yeah. I see it all the time. Yeah. I do. There's an, I saw it today. I, I saw it today once. once. That's a phenomenon I read about on the internet. It's your brain attributes significance to 9-11 and your brain works backwards. It is, I, I was in middle school way before 9-11. And you, and you remember seeing 9-11 a lot? Before 9 11 happened? Yeah. No, you recognize because, because, no, well, no, because back then it was 911, it was the emergency call uh, number. And I would always see 911, and then it got to the point where it used to scare me, but then I would see 911. Like if I would get into a friend's car and I'd pop in and I would look at their digital clock and it would go 911, and I would see it, and it was like seeing the face of a friend. So now when I see it, I go like, hey, buddy. And then when 911 happened, that all changed, because now it's a whole different thing. Well, moving on with our facts about Arlington. <laughs> H highest probability of anyone in the audience having lost a loved one during 911. Yeah, I, 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 and, we're, and we're, we're doing bits about it. Yeah, sensitive stuff. Marshmallow fluff invented in Somerville, but here's where you invented 9-11. It's a little less appetizing than a plain debate, but you did it. Congratulations. Wisconsin, what did Wisconsin do? They sat shoes, I think we invented shoes. Cheese. Okay. They invented Dan Harmon. Nice. As this film says. All right, come on. Let's let's move on. Let's meet some people. Let's let's stir some shit up. <laughs> Do we have a representative of uh, of Arlington, Virginia, out there? Anybody who feels that they have something to uh... Do we have anybody uh, that, that believes in ghosts? <laughs> isn't it isn't this a big ghost state? Uh, <laughs> has anybody ever heard, had, a, had an encounter with a ghost? A real one. Holy shit, nobody. <laughs> I think we just disproved you ghosts. Have? Okay, get up here, get up here. Right. What's your name, sir? Adam. Adam's coming up. We'll be with you in a second, probably. Uh, I thought maybe. Because we're on the East Coast, like, there's, all, there's more ghosts on the East Coast. 
<laughs> it used to yeah, be called, no, it's true. It used to be called the East Ghost. <laughs> That's how it got its name. Uh, Adam, uh, what, 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 tell us your uh, ghost story. Um, I was like, uh, I, so I was like eight or nine years old, and I was um, in my parents' bedroom, like early on, like a Sunday morning. That was not a ghost, Adam. Adam. <laughs> That's called an erection. Yeah. It was haunting, but natural. But I was like, I looked to the cross of the room, and all of a sudden, I saw like this dark sort of like shadow figure and I think like his yeah. head popped off and it was like bouncing back and forth like just the walls. <laughs> oh my god, I just had a room. <laughs> oh my god, what a breakthrough. <laughs> no, wait, I'm sorry. Yes, I, 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 you, you saw a dark figure, you were in your parents' bedroom. Were they? Were they a dark too? figure coming yeah, in? Yeah, like they, we were, we were all in the bed together because that's not weird. <laughs> So, but how old are you, eight, nine? I was like eight or nine. Yeah, eight. I slept with my mom a lot during my parents' separation. <laughs> my parents you, separated. You see a dark figure into the room? My parents separated and, uh, and uh, my mom moved to South Milwaukee. Uh, we never pronounced the H there. And uh, she was living above her mom's place, my grandma. And, uh, and she would, every night she would I would hear her like calling on the phone to my dad and going, I don't know what's going on. And it was like emotionally, like put me in a bubble. But I remember like, I remember sleeping in my mom's bed because I, I could have sworn my mom wanted me to. I could have sworn it was not my choice. I thought that like, but I bet I was all fucked up too. And, uh, but this is the, the most distinct emotional memory I have. My dad came over to visit my mom. They were separated. And, uh, and, and, and my, my dad uh, came over and he's like, oh, I guess we're gonna go to the zoo, uh, Tiki, that was my nickname. And, uh, Wait, sorry, what? Uh, let's, get back, let's get back to that later. My nickname was Tiki. Um, and then my mom said, uh, uh, can I talk to you alone for a second? To my dad. And so that meant I had to leave. So I left the room, but I listened at the door because it was like, like, what the fuck? What, 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 I guess they're gonna talk about me, obviously. They're not gonna talk about the stock market. The, like, uh, and and I, my mom really threw me under the bus. Like, she, she went, like, I listened behind the door and I heard my mom go, you know, uh, this is really fucking up, your son. You know, he, do you know he sleeps in bed with me every night? Do you know that he, you know, it's traumatizing him. And I remember thinking, like, you bitch. You, you. Hit on me! <laughs> you wanted it! I feel that we have a my mom sometimes, man. <laughs> For real? Yeah, it's, she's like, she's constantly very, really, really like affectionate, but almost to a point that it feels almost sexualized. It's, it's or fake? Or, or, or fake? Targeted? No, not fake. Uh, are, are you, are, are you, do you have siblings? I have uh, one older brother, but we have different moms. But they say there's a thing uh, that's referred to as silent seduction, where, where a mother will pick one of uh, like two or more uh, male uh, offspring, and that one receives all of the love, all of the affection, but also all, she of, wants to all of the all, also all the craziness, all the anger. It's like that's you know, absolutely true. So, so yeah, so I, I think I had that one too. Like uh, you're you're involved in an unwitting emotional uh, kind of relationship, uh, like a dating relationship with this with this woman. Yeah, it's it's me out sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I don't live Did you did you did you get to an age when I, I remember being like twelve or thirteen and my mom coming up behind me and kind of like giving me like a shoulder rub and kind of and, and then and then me going like knock it off. I think that's just a puberty thing, right? Like you you, you go she, stop touching. She, she was going to puberty. <laughs> no, I was. I think I think the reason I remember it is because I was like I decided okay, no more affection. Like I don't you know I'm a man now. Or does she see you going through puberty and goes, I'm like, oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> a man? Yeah, I don't know, man. God damn it. We need, we need more uh, open books on this stuff. You so, hear me, White House? So, so Adam, where's uh, your committee on this shit? Stop making us take our shoes off at the, at the airport and start figuring out our mom's brains. Why do they want to fuck us so bad? So Adam, you feel like you were the lightning rod for all of your mother's like attention in that way? Oh, and, and when it comes to the craziness, definitely. Like my parents got divorced like four years ago, um, which you know I was surprised by. Like it usually doesn't happen that much later in a person's life. Like I was 21 when it happened, 
And basically, whenever <laughs> they come to you, and you're in a bar, and, and your dad like, it's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's important for you to know. <laughs> my, my dad doesn't even talk about that sort of stuff or anything real for that matter. I remember my dad trying to talk to me about our parents' separation and me getting so embarrassed. I was reading a, like a Spider-Man comic on the front seat of our station wagon, and my dad finally started to broach the subject. Like way too late, way too late. Like everything was, the luggage was moved, everything was topsy turvy. And like I was reading a Spider-Man comic, I had already figured out how to deal with it, which was to shut down and become autistic. I don't, I don't, I don't, my, my, you know, or commit to an already prevalent autism. And, and my dad was like driving, and he just out of nowhere was like. Uh, you know, your mother and I have gone through some changes. <laughs> and I was like, just steer, I was like, focus on the Spider Man! Uh, and, uh, you know, it's important for you to know it's not your fault. And uh, it just stumbled through this thing, and I was like, no, finish it up and play him off. Uh, and, then, and then, like, like, like they're making this pause, and they go, you know, it's just important for you to know that. If you'd stop reading your fucking comic book, <laughs> I got really mad, and I was like, "I know, God, Jesus!" <laughs> like I, I, really, I remember that moment too. Like you, you, my my dad like reaching out to me. It was just painful. So then, so then let's connect here. Let's look. Yeah, at but it was too late, too artificial, too focused. And how old were you then? Probably ten, eleven. Four, nine, eleven. <laughs> Uh, Spen so, so, so. Spencer, uh, dis disaffected emotional parent monster. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Trying to get her attention, her mother looks over with a lazy glaze over her look. <laughs> she seems exhausted as if the weight of the world rests upon her shoulders. <laughs> you think that this might not be the best time to ask for ice cream? <laughs> Going to fucking yeah. die. <laughs> All right, so Adam, you're a ghost. A ghost. So a, a, a dark figure comes in, the head's popping about, and then moving about, right? Yeah, it's just sort of popping about and like making this sort of hissing sound. All I can really remember is like I couldn't breathe at all. That's a thing. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't move. That, 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 I, 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 look, 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 sorry, I'm stammering, but, but uh, I remember being in my bed. Well, that's a thing. There's a, there's, a, there's a chemical in your brain that paralyzes you when you're asleep, right? So that you don't, if you have a dream that you're like uh, fucking a hot dog, that you don't get up and fuck a hot dog. And, 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 which won't be a hot dog, it'll be the ironing board and you'll, get, you'll, you'll hurt your family. Uh, the, uh, uh, there's a, there's a, when you go into deep sleep, there's supposed to be like, you know, your body can't move, and so your brain goes into this state where no matter how much flailing around you're doing in your sleep, you can't, you're not actually moving. But then there's this weird thing that happens. We've all had this experience, probably everyone in this room, uh, where you, you wake up and you're fully awake, but that chemical has still paralyzed your body, and you can't move. Like, you're awake, and you can't move. And like, like sometimes you can't breathe. That hasn't happened yet. I've never, I've never had that. Oh, oh, really? Sleep paralysis. Yeah, that yeah. happens. It, yeah. It, it, well, for, like, for me, like, they, they say like, like in, in your dreams, like when you're trying to run or just even jog up a hill, but like, your legs are sluggish and you can't move, it's your brain like knowing that they're, like, the, the chemicals your brain uh, administers while you sleep to make you really just fall asleep and your eyelids shut and like everything work and shut down. Like your brain knows that, so you're kind of uh, paralyzed during your dreams. I, I've never had that in my waking state. Though. So when people are, when people are, uh, yeah, all the shit that happens to you in your sleep, it's all just various combinations of different sleep disorders. Like sometimes you're, that paralysis chemical is not working right, which is the sleepwalking. But Adam, were, did, were, you, were you awake? Did you, did you feel that you yeah, were like, I've been awake for a few minutes when it happened, and all I, all I remember is I was hearing you know, the hissing sound and the head popping back and forth. And I kept wanting to say something, like wake my parents up. Yeah, you want to scream. Something. And I couldn't. And you couldn't scream. And the next thing I knew, it just disappeared. Yeah, but then after it disappeared, did you then go, <laughs> even though it was too late? Like, that's what I did. I, I remember like waking up. I remember being wide awake in my bed when I was like 17. And I remember the full on, perfectly vivid image of an absolute like corporeal woman, like a witch in a black robe, 
starting from the corner of my bedroom behind my bedroom door, taking full strides over to my bed and like like get, like like covering and like getting in my face like 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 a real person, and I was wide awake, and I just went. I couldn't move while she was doing it, and then, and then the, it kind of like disappeared in a cloud. But I was wide awake and in cold sweats. And then, the, the, as soon as I regained my faculties, I went, "Mom!" I was seventeen. It was so embarrassing. Um, they say they say and she that rolls that's over a, and goes, "What is it?" Real nice guy. And I say, "Stop giving me shoulder rubs and get to the real deal." Answer, don't be embarrassed. Uh, don't. You're not gonna get bullied, like for real. Like by, a, I guess by applause only because we can't see you. Is there anybody who is like <laughs> you're just waving? Very. Is there anybody in the audience that wants to just wave? Uh, uh, but beyond that, is there anybody in the audience that, that believes in alien abduction, like mythology, like 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 that the idea that there are aliens? Uh, okay. Uh, how, okay. How, about, how about a woman? Any, any, any gals here believe in? <laughs> well, there was a clause. Anybody want to come up and talk about it? Is there anybody willing to come up and talk about it a little bit? You believe in it, right? There's a, there's all right, a, all right. He's, 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 he's not a lady, but he, uh, he's, he believes in it. Let's, let's welcome uh, whoever you are. What's your name, sir? Casey. Casey, oh, to the stage, to everybody. Spencer, <laughs> alien monster. <laughs> Is that a, okay. You see okay. a circular beam of light floating down from the heavens is a green, ghastly figure with a large, oversized head. It's a, like an alien. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jeez. Right. That, 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 was, that was too over the plate. Yeah. I know it's used sci-fi. Yeah, okay. message, right. message there. Spencer's bored. That was the message. Yeah, some bullshit's I'm happening. Not, not Go to Hot Topic if you want this kind of crap. <laughs> I cater to a specific crowd. Go fuck yourself. All right, Casey, uh, you, you, you believe in alien, in alien encounters, abductions? Yeah, sure. Has yeah. it based on anything? Any, any, like, what, what, what do you base that belief on? That it would, that it would be rad. <laughs> that it would be rad? Well, that, that's why I believe in hot tub parties. I, re I was writing a screenplay when I was like 23-ish, something like that, that was an alien abduction comedy. Uh, it's going to be like a new Ghostbusters. Uh, and I, I started researching all this alien abduction shit, and I got really freaked out because I, I got frequent nosebleeds as a kid, and I had all these, you know, like, like stuff when I was asleep, and I started experiencing, you know, like, 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 it gets in your head. Uh, I, 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 uh, I thought that I, I really thought aliens were, uh, were abducting me, Jeff. <laughs> Father, I mean, I think people have instances where they have blacked out or something weird has happened, and then the next morning you wake up and there's a physiological difference, maybe you lost some hair, or an ear or something. An ear? <laughs> Aliens and alien. Has anyone in the audience, th does anyone in the audience think they've been abducted by an alien? <laughs> Applaud, if you can, if you can overcome your telepathic shit. So, so, so Casey, you, you, okay, you, you're, just, you're just saying your mind is open to that possibility, that, that you think that people, like you believe, uh, you want to believe, that, that, that people have been interacted with by aliens. Yeah, my, my mind is on the but as we were ruling it, mine too. I mean, I wouldn't rule it out. Certainly, why, why bother ruling it again? Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't believe in ghosts. I, I, I am a, like, have a logical, uh, skeptical mind. I don't believe that ghosts come around and fuck with you and go like, and, like throw a plate across the room. However. I had an apartment that is now our friend Rob Schraub's apartment. Uh, Rob Schraub is how I know Dan Harmon. Like, they were writing partners. And I had to move out of an apartment in LA, Casey, and uh, it was a great apartment. But I couldn't afford it because my roommate moved out and I was broke. But the day that my friend and I moved in, uh, it was Halloween, but we didn't think about that. And also the, the number, the, the, the prefix or the phone number that the uh, telephone company wanted to give us was 666, because mine is 665, but that's like 664, 663, that's that neighborhood, but they can't get rid of the 666s because people, you know, are Catholic and shit, you know, or whatever. So, uh, and my roommate was Irish Catholic, he's like, he's like oh no, I can't do that, my, my, my mother never called me, she never called me. And so, uh, 
So we got a, another number, and so we check in this new place, and we were the third residents to ever live there, but the apartment was built in the 50s. The first resident, a LAPD homicide detective, and then an old married couple, and the husband died. Not in that apartment, at a, uh, I don't know, a hospital rather, and the wife moved to a one bedroom in the building. So we move in, it's a great place, and every time that the two of us were out of the house, or out of the apartment, something crazy happened. We bought a brand new clock, every time we left, we come back, the clock would be stopped at a certain time. And all of the pictures on the wall would be off the wall, but thrown across the hallway to the opposite side and broken. Uh, yeah, so if the painting was on the right side of the hallway, it would be thrown to the left side of the hallway and smashed, and left to right and smashed, and things would be tipped over and broken. So we thought, okay, like somebody has our keys and they're coming in, they're wrecking our place. So we asked Helene, the, the widow of the dead guy, uh, who'd lived there for 35 years, uh, does anybody else have these keys? He goes, no, we just put new locks on. I don't even have the keys. You and the landlord, he's this 80 year old uh, guy, like, like only you guys have the keys. So usually one or the other, uh, me and Paul would be at the apartment at one time, because we had very different schedules, because uh, I was an alcoholic and he was an animator. So he was out <laughs> early and I was out uh, dancing. So, uh, so we were usually, uh, somebody was at home, but any time the two of us went to the market together, we'd come home and everything was busted. The pictures were all thrown around, clocks would stop, and the bathtub would, there would be sh like, like, just this matter everywhere. Like, not like stuff, like, like not like, like if the drain spat out stuff, or not if it backed up. There was just a random, like, splatter pattern of stuff all over the bathtub, and we just thought, someone's fucking with us, like, what's going on? Uh, that kind of goes away a little bit. We go into an attic, we find there's an attic in it. We go up into the attic and we look up and it's, it's you know, like, it's, it's LA, it's like 78 degrees out always. And in the attic, it should be hotter because the, the heat rises. I get up into the attic and I look up and I see some old Christmas decorations and stuff. And instantly the temperature drops to like what feels like 55 degrees, like outside the, uh, the draft house right now. And, and it's like instantly just crazy chill comes over me. I kind of get this weird feeling. And I don't think, ooh, scary ghosts. I just drop back down the little ladder. I go, Paul, uh, go, go check it out. There's some cool stuff up there. Like, just to get, like, a, like to get a real reading on this. And he, uh, he, he climbs the ladder and puts his head right down. He goes, Jeff, we're never going up there again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so time passes a little bit. I'm in my bedroom. I, I had the bedroom where the husband slept because they were an old married couple. And I think you find that often they sleep in different rooms because the husband snores and farts and the woman wants to get a night's sleep. And I had his room, and I was in, I was getting undressed, I'm down to my boxers, and I just have a feeling that absolutely somebody's behind me. Like somebody's like on the carpet behind me. And I turn around, I'm like, okay, fucking enough! Enough of this shit! Had enough of this! You're dead! You don't live here anymore! I live here now, so fucking stop it! Stop it! And nothing ever happened again. So I still. Story is far from over. The only reason they made a bigger deal out of it in The Exorcist is because obviously that would be a shitty movie. If, yeah. Uh, so my, my, my roommate, my, my, my roommate, my roommate goes, "What the hell's going on?" I go, "I just exercised my bedroom as a fucking guy." So the end. I lived there for another eight months. Nothing weird ever happens. I never thought that the place was haunted. I just thought there was this weird activity that kept fucking happening. But there was a time when I felt there was a motherfucker standing behind me. And not because the guy had died there. He didn't die there. I was not implanted with this knowledge. I didn't really care about it. So Rob Straub moves in a year later when I move out. And story is halfway done. <laughs> oh. No, this is like page two of them. <laughs> so we're at a bar, Rob Straub is at the, we're at the drawing room, at the burgundy room, and Rob comes out and he just gets a screwdriver and just boom, just drops it. Gets a bartender, another, drinks it straight down. Another, and he's drinking I go, Rob, what the fuck? I've never, never seen you drink like this. He's like, eh, I don't want to go home sober. I'm like, what, is something wrong? Like, the girlfriend or the girl you're dating? He's like, no, I don't know, it's stupid. I don't want to talk about it. I just don't, eh. He's like, he's about to cry. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? He goes, this is the place on Lowry. He's like, anything weird ever happened there to you? And I was like, what do you mean? I had still, again, like, I, I don't instantly leap to ghosts. Or, I never really thought that it was just a bunch of weird shit happening. And he goes, I don't know. I was like, you slept in the bedroom I slept in, right? I, I sleep in. I go, yeah. He goes, is it, is it haunted? I go, oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> 
And Rob goes, ah! Ah! Don't say that! Don't say that! Don't say that! He starts crying. I go, what happened? What the fuck happened? He goes, ever since I moved in there, uh, I, I hung all this artwork up, and every time I left the place and there was nobody in there, I would come back and all the paintings were off the walls, they were all broken. Anytime I hung a picture of somebody's face uh, on it, the, all the pictures were gone and it was smashed across the room. And the, last night, like there was all this weird shit going on, but last night I was laying in bed and I heard my bedroom door open and I felt I heard somebody walking across the carpet in my room and I felt the weight of a person's body getting onto my bed. And I was like, were you awake or were you asleep? He was like, I was on my stomach, which is rare for me, but I looked at the clock and it was 4, 10 a.m. I thought, are Dan and Jeff still here? Did we watch a movie together? It's like, no, they're not here. It's like, I've had this conscious thought and I felt this person get on top of me. And I thought, okay, it's a burglar. Like, saw a burglar's in my room or a rapist. Who would never be Dan and Jeff? <laughs> Certainly not. Not, not. not until tonight. Uh, and he, he waved the body get on top of him and, and he heard a voice in his ear go, he, the voice said, what are you doing in my room? And Rob jumped up across the room and nothing was there. So I went with Rob to the apartment again and I went, get the fuck out of here, man! <laughs> You're dead! Like, Rob, Rob made me go back and be the world's shitty Texas. This has been a Halloween, Halloween Arlington, Arlington National Cemetery. Spooky, ooky, Harmon Toonies. The yeah. end. Uh, Jesus Christ. I think he told that story before on the podcast. Is that right? Yeah. I don't know. No? Yeah, in, in your face. All right. Good. Thank you. All credibility is lost with a camera on your head. I, yeah. All right, Casey, uh, uh, what do you want? <laughs> but I mean that in the actual non passive aggressive sense. Like, what do you really want? How do you want to go? Yeah, like, well, whatever that is you're drinking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that goes without saying, yeah. Give it, load them up, load them up. But I mean, think Thanks about it. While you load that up, I want to hear what you want. I don't care if it's a noun, an adjective, a sentence, a phrase, a thought. A, yeah, what would you dream? What do you want? We're going we're gonna to give it to you figuratively. If you could go home tonight and tell your loved ones uh, something happened tonight, what would that be? Joy. Enjoy. Enjoy. We really are ten minutes from the White House. No, 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 not in that case. He said pancakes. Oh, pancakes. I thought he said in that case. Pancakes. Joy and pancakes. All right. Casey wants joy and pancakes. Can we just real quick, Jeff? Oh, it's a wrap? All right. All right. What do you want? I thought it would be like a movie, like a, like a quick movie. A movie, movie called Joint Pancakes? Yeah. All right. Starring Casey. Okay. With me as Casey. <laughs> and Casey as you? No, Casey's out here. Okay. <laughs> Casey, everybody. Welcome to Casey. <laughs> the year is 1939. Hitler's armies have crossed into Poland. World War II has begun. Soldier, do you hear me? Or I'll send you to Leavenworth. Yes, sir. Even though we're not in the Navy. I'm just a soldier without a war. Trying to bring pancakes, but I need more. Don't know what place to shoot or duck. 
Germans in both wars don't give a fuck. Ach, wieso da hinten? Wieso da hinten war Außenseiter? Oh, During my song, I wandered across enemy lines. There's a mortar attack. I gotta dive into this foxhole. No. Englander? See. I speak a little English. I am a German pancake meister. Oh, I saw you a beatboxer, forgive me. I am from the future. Listen, this war is needless. War is all about destruction and annihilation and separation between the people. The lines are connected. A human from a lesser human being. I always had that sense. Can I tell you a simple story? See? About 11 years ago, before Ron Sharp lived in this apartment, I lived in an apartment with an Irish roommate. And it was Halloween, and the phone company is inside. Six to hours a later, <laughs> holy shit, the war is over. So then I climb up into the attic, and I look around, and I get the weird, the temperature just changes. And so I go back down. 12 years later, and, and I, the Cold War is over. Or beginning. Or actually, we're right kind of in the middle of the Cold War right now. Johan. Yes, Sebastian. Casey for short. I don't have much time left. I'm uh, now 93. I feel, I feel like I wasted about 20 or so years on the, on the story about the ghost. It's okay. I, I really should have just given you a recipe for pancakes that could have stopped both World War I and World War II. You see, I am a timeless pancake meister. Yes, I was there at the Battle of Valley Forge. Yes, I was there. Flashback to Valley Forge. Washington soldiers, charge! I'm George Washington! Cross it! Keep crossing it! Don't stop! They're gonna, you're gonna be tempted to stop pancakes. crossing it! Get your German future pancakes! Sir, sir, my name is George Washington. I'm trying to cross this area. You need to get clear, sir, get clear! I would give you, George Washington, the recipe to my secret German future pancakes, however, if I did that, war would end. But I cannot do that. You see, I'm here to cast a sad light on humanity. You see, war is a perpetual state of humanity. Yes, hey, man, I don't, my teeth are made of wood. I don't have time for this Clyde They're not made of bullshit. wood. They're not made of wood. That is a lie. They're hippopotamus bone. <laughs> Flash forward to the, the, uh, to the spine of the... Yeah, you were at Valley Forge? Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I, I, throughout time, I could, I could have given Alexander the Great, Napoleon, pancakes, and then all wars would have ended. But you see, I withhold pancakes. Because war is a part of, it's a part of who we are. It's a part of this nutritious breakfast of humanity. It's part of this nutritious breakfast of humanity. Like the orange juice is pain, and the, and the milk is... Uh... Casey, don't worry about war. Wars will solve themselves. What you should worry yourself most with is aliens. <laughs> Cut to Manhattan, 2019 AD. <laughs> hover car. <laughs> hover car. In the news, Neil, President of uh, Fuckface, who did the thing? Uh, it's not a dirty word anymore. Language is changing. <laughs> the postage stamps are the new fuel. <laughs> Pennies are worth a dollar. Bottle caps are hats. <laughs> Corn is, corn is a potato. Hey man, you got, you got any shoes? And by shoes, I mean sleeves? Oh no, leave me alone. Everything is different. It's 2019. Hello. Identity door recognized. Opening. Identity door closing. We're having recognized you. Uh, <laughs> General Casey. Yes. 
Reporting for duty, sir. I had bad news for you. We found that we had master war, but we haven't. It turns out we are under attack by a pancake monster. Slowly, it <laughs> rises over the horizon. One, two, seven full pancakes <laughs> covered in butter. It opens its juicy maw and leaks glistening syrup. <laughs> Yeah, it charges. <laughs> yes. Pancakes have evolved that they have cheeks of the mom. <laughs> Casey, are you okay? I'm <laughs> fine. You're... I guess if this if this could be a 70s movie, it could just end here. Right? <laughs> That's kind of like that. In the 80s, then they figured out a whole third act after that, and they blow up the pancakes, and no one cares, and kids should take kids to it. In the 70s, you could just end there. Yeah. Gene Hackman would run a frame. Hey, you! You'd hear a gunshot credits. <laughs> Wait, was that the, uh, what was that one, the, uh, taking a Pelham 1, 2, 3? That was the French Connection. The French Connection. Yeah. Like, he literally, <laughs> like, Gene Hackman's like, it's the end of the movie, over there! And he ran off frame, and you hear, <laughs> Credits. <laughs> no, no spoilers possible, because <laughs> that's you, know, you make up your own ending. Uh, that's the seventies. Like Omega Man, Charlton Heston just hanging out with zombies, and they're like, "Hey, you're a zombie." I don't know. I'm gonna fuck it. Good night. Um, <clears throat> uh, for a little bit of time only, this tiny eraser. <laughs> We're gonna be giving those out all night. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> God, that ghost story so long. I, uh, I could have sworn you told that before. I don't know. I told, I told you before. Yeah. Um, and, uh, okay, so, so, so uh, yeah, no politics. Uh, uh, no more ghost stories. No more ghost stories. Right. Aliens, race. race. We settle on anything about race? Should we, try to, should we try to break our record? Because our record in Harmon Time shows is two black people. Do we have more than two tonight? Yeah. Oh, oh my god. god. Wait, why is that white guy raising both his hands? Wait, Casey? <laughs> Casey's half a black Casey's person. Casey's half a black person. All right. He was already up there. Two? Two, Two and a half. half. Okay, that, there's him. Four? Six? Holy, Holy shit! Wow. Let's get him all up there. All black Mega people. Black. All black people on the stage. Mega black. Time attack. Mega black. Time attack. It's the half dozen man march. <laughs> Yes! I want all black people up on this stage if possible. All right, here we are. If, if, you're, if you're a black person and you're in the audience right now, you are selling out your race. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. Seven and a half black people, everybody. Come forward, come forward. Should we have him do the, the Rihanna chorus, the Dido hook for the... Oh, right, hell yeah. Yeah, I'll fucking, I'll spit some fire and then, All right. and then uh, let's do that. Let me, let me and you, you guys will join in too, but the visual, oh my god. Oh, uh, Harmontown's getting more and more sophisticated. Where the, oh yeah. Okay, so, uh, we'll, you want to teach them the lyrics? We'll, we'll, we'll do one. Those of you that know it, get in there and do it. It's, uh, I can't remember it, I'm so drunk, it's, uh... Yeah. Her head frown upside down. P is yellow. Yo, come on down to Harmon Town. Turn that frown upside down. P is yellow, poop is brown. Come on down to Harmon Town. Colors, what did they mean? Could you go from a scene to a scene? If your skin was pale white or dark as night, would you be allowed to do a, a flying kite maneuver over the city? I fucked your mama because I loved your juicy titty. I, I squeezed it till the milk come out. And the milk was white, but did that give it more clout? I don't know. Whatever milk was black, wouldn't that give your white ass a heart attack? Would it be worth more or worth less? What if your mama's milk was purple, Herman Hess? Come on down to Harmontown. 
Turn that frown upside down. Race. P is yellow, poop is brown. Black is come on down to Harmontown. Struggle in the city, in the streets. Every manhole cover is another piece of meat. I love to pick it up like a piece of roast beef. Flip it up in the air and do it like Keith for Sutherland. He was a famous person that loved to eat meat. Sorry, sorry. Uh, starting over. I fucked your mama, Mars Rover. Come down to Harmon Town. Moonwalk. Turn that frown upside down. Race. He is yellow, poop is brown. Africa. Come on down. Yellow, Harmon Town. Dexter Bulls, Bill Cosby. Everybody's going from Norman Lear straight to me. I'm the new representative of their voice. Nobody black has another choice. You're not allowed to get hired as a writer if you're black, so it comes to me. I'm like Spider-Man. I'm the Peter Parker of the new generation. I'm going to speak for the black people of this nation. Here's the things that they like in the order of this. They like carrots and lettuce and piss. It goes like that. Don't ask them. You gotta come through me. Yo, yo, what? What? Rap battle. Rap battle. Oh shit. You know what? It's metaphorical. 
Well, we we can deal it. with it head on. All right. What go are we ahead. supposed to do? Go ahead. This is my favorite form of permanent action. I like my whole life. I say, Jeff, here's what I say. We, we, we break a pool cue in half. And we put it on the floor. <laughs> No, sorry, that's not, that's not, that's, that's the way we've been handling it. Uh, 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 let's play Dungeons and Dragons and have all black people that, 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 that want to be a part of it represent all black people in the whole nation. And they can, and they can play a character that we'll make up on the fly. Right, Anywho, cool. Spencer, I'm leave it to you to include, uh, our, our seven and a half black people in there. So, did you say one character for all of them? No, yeah, yeah, that, I mean, the, yeah, all black people have to play one character. <laughs> I mean, look, we've done so much. We're bending over backwards here. What, what do you want us to do? I didn't, this wasn't my problem. I inherited this. I, I think I'm being pretty heroic by providing them with one D&D character. He can be super strong. He won't be a kleptomaniac or have a stutter. He'll be the dentist or the next door neighbor. All right, so let's start this up. Aaron McGathy to the stage, please. Aaron McGathy. Is there a mic through the ear? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, uh, okay, here we go. Let, uh, Spencer? Bill. Where should I? <laughs> All right. I'm gonna grab this one. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah, I'm all good, you guys. All right. Everybody? On the last oh, episode, no. our heroes had defeated Dave, the airship pilot, and gained control of the ship. After tormenting some crew members, the group had to find the engine room <laughs> and enlisted the help of Slash threw into a wall a couple of imps who were tasked with servicing the ship's engines. After finding some sovereign glue, the ship seemed prepared. Sharpie decided that they should press onward and attempt to take the fight to Admiral Darkstar. It was just then that a calamitous impact shook the entire ship before casting everything into darkness. All right, you were all knocked unconscious. You wake up in the hole of the black ship, or well, what's left of it at any rate. You can see that the hole has been ripped into two halves. Through the wreckage, you can see dull red walls slick with slime surrounding you. You seem to be at the bottom of a pit, as above you stretches a black expanse. Go! All right, and didn't we meet like, some people who were gonna walk us down the road? Yeah, okay, so like that I didn't write because I thought we'd just do it right now, but uh, okay. do you want to just... <laughs> I look up and I, I look around and see if there's any people that will help us down the road. You see three white figure or three white clothed figures. Why don't you just make it eight? <laughs> <laughs> this is you, you guys are elsewhere. Seems like with a quick edit you could, you could make this very appropriate. <laughs> Can there be seven and a half black figures? <laughs> seven and a half black figures approach. <laughs> Why can't it just be a full eighth black person? He said he was half black. I was just making a joke. Okay. He, he's a halfling. <laughs> seven black people and a black halfling approach. <laughs> Oh, oh dear God! Oh no! Can't be mutated. All right. So you guys have been living in the belly of this great beast for quite some time. You're quite used to it, but you just saw this ship crash down to the floor. It's quite a new occurrence for you guys. I mean. Stowaways and shipwrecks occasionally happen, but it's quite rare. So that's your motivation as you're approaching this wreck. So our ship crashed inside the mouth of this uh, the infinite fish. fish. Correct. And I should mention, Jeff, that your crystal, uh, I'm sorry, not your crystal, your healing pendant shatters into a billion piles of little crystals. Whoa. Yeah. That's like in a video game, because we would have been able to use that. <laughs> 
As this happens, you feel some of the crystals dissolving, healing you to full health. You okay. see a small pile of crystals remaining. Uh, I gather those crystals. All right, you gather them. And where are my hit points at right now? Uh, they're full now. So I have 40 hit points, motherfucker. Yeah. Come here. Can we get our character shoes? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Jesus, you're so high. It wasn't me. You guys brought everyone, and then you just randomly segued into D and D without any forewarning before I had anything set up. All right, Spencer. I, I walk up to one of the uh, uh, to, 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 to this, uh, this group of uh, people, and I find a, 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 a person that seems to be the leader. And she has a red and blue feather, uh, uh, a pink and blue feather in her ear, and I, I, I assume she's the leader. So I, I, I come up and address her and say, uh, "Can you please help us?" If, if we could help you, we help ourselves. We're still, we're stuck here. Like, I don't know what you want us to do. How long have you been stuck here? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We don't have any cons. Like, how It's felt like years. Okay, so a long time. A very long time. I noticed that she's wearing a handmade, this feels terrible vest that I regard. Oh. <laughs> That's all nice. right, right? We do get onto the podcast here. <laughs> The Wi Fi is great. <laughs> I, I thought I had a handle of this metaphor, but it's totally convoluted now. Right? Uh, well, so you guys. <laughs> so, you guys, if you knew how to get out of here, you'd have, you would have gotten out of here, huh? Hell yeah. All right. I mean, we had tongue stew for a million years. Like, cutting off the tongue of the, the beast's mouth and making soup isn't really enjoyable. I'd rather, you know. Where, where do you all... Oh, I'm shaking in watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. 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 I, 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 I pick something else to look at. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I roll versus blessing. <laughs> you save. Uh, uh, where, where did you, uh, black figures? Are they figures? They're people. They're <laughs> figureheads. <laughs> They're fucking people, Maureen. Or, or portals across the to the what I'm gonna call south for you know sake of directionality. You see, what <laughs> that's, a, that's a great reason to call it south. <laughs> that's actually the only reason to call it south. <laughs> I gotta draw a map, you know, for my reference, and I can't like. There's no south of a fish, but <laughs> but there's down on the paper. Okay. Anyway, you see a curtain. It appears to be made out of some sort of fleshy meat-like substance. A meat curtain? A meat curtain. <laughs> a, a wizard sleeve? <laughs> a portable hole. I thrust, my, I thrust myself headlong through the meat curtain. <laughs> Are you saying to the meat curtain? <laughs> Are you saying that once you go through this particular meat curtain, you never go back? <laughs> Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> Heedless of her warning, I thrust myself uh, through the fleshy folds of the meat curtain. You see what appears to be a snake-like appendage whip out of the curtain. Oh, it's a dick inside a pussy. Yeah. You got me. The tentacle whips at you, but misses by a hair. Come on in, guys. It's, it's okay. I I approach the uh, the whipping serpent serpent, and I, I whip my hair around in an attempt to calm it down. Or maybe to just make it straighter. The curtain. 
opens. Three more tendrils reveal themselves. Jesus. It's a lady. They also miss. Are we armed? Uh, you guys are actually armed with um, daggers and spears. Sorry, you guys. Spencer. <laughs> spears are going to be really useful, as you'll see later. I can't do anything. All right. Guys, you've been here for three generations. If we don't go through this meat curtain together, we've got no chance of getting out. I say follow me with your spears and curtain and daggers. Uh, I say we send one of the black people in first. <laughs> <laughs> you aren't even in first. Oh, that's right, I'm already got Marty in there. Before you go in, I shoot one arrow. <laughs> <laughs> More? I shoot 14 arrows! I wore two. Two. Yeah. <laughs> One of the arrows strikes the meat curtain. It shudders violently. Uh, am I sorry? <laughs> okay. Are we all through are we all through the curtain right now? No one's even tried to go through it. Wait. Everybody! Let's all charge! Charge the meat curtain! <laughs> Uh, I feel 
uncomfortable. I'll lead the charge. Where are you? Oh, this will actually be embarrassing. <laughs> Esophagus, a motherfucking mama like I was couple up against. Gonna take my trunk, it's not imaginary. I'm gonna fuck your mama like an aviary, bird to bird, feather to feather. Gonna fuck your mom like my name was Carl Weathers. Gonna fuck her neck, fuck her butt, I'm gonna fuck her salted ass peanuts. I'm gonna fuck her cashew, fuck her almond. Gonna fuck her name like my name was Philip Drummond. Fuck her like a different stroke. I'm gonna fuck your mama like my dick was a joke. I gotta set up on my nuts, gotta punch one on my tip. Fuck your mama. That's how I'm hit. Ooh. Uh, then I assume that's like a broken sesame. The rhythmic pounding of feet and limbs and the flailing of your bodies seems to do nothing at first, but then you feel the expanding and contracting muscular action. Jesus. <laughs> the esophageal tube opens and widens. <laughs> Revealing a larger antechamber. So we're going down the throat into the, into the belly of this and it's in a fish. You're going down an esophageal tube. It may or may not be a throat. It opens into a large chamber. Dungeon snap! You, dungeon snap. You can see several wooden uh, constructions built together. They seem to have been made out of parts of old ships or perhaps other crates and boxes. But they, they help hold together quite nicely. There seems to be about 16 or 17 of the dwellings. This is where you guys have, have lived. Uh, your parents, you know, they came, I guess you, I said third generation, so your <laughs> parents came on ships and they built these into a village. So that's where you guys live. Wait, so they, they lived here? Yeah, well, yeah. But have they, have they been here before? They, they, li they, they lived, lived through three generations. generations. Yeah, they, they, they made homes a different path. Oh, oh so we just took the long, hard way to get here? <laughs> this is like the corner of the so, Wait, they could have told us how to get home? <laughs> is, it, I mean, is, that, is that your doorbell? We all do a dance and that's how you get home? You guys saw the meat. Okay, okay. That makes sense. We yeah, should have to pay a price. TV. Just Wi Fi. <laughs> so now we're, we're now we're at the home of these people. Yeah, this is this is your guys' home. Uh, you love it. Uh, Let's you feng shui the organs. No, that's someone else's joke. Sorry guys. Uh <laughs> it's beautiful here. It's great here, guys. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, I've, I've never seen such a nice place inside of an esophageal tube before. <laughs> I love what you've done with the, uh, the throat. We, we tried, we tried. We get a lot of stupid living on the Wi-Fi, so we try to make it cozy. You really started from a place of nothing and built from the scraps of, a, of a, you know, and, and, and created something that's, 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 that's equally appealing and a testament to the environment that is this uh, uh, infinite fish. You can even say you found love in a hopeless way. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like, like, like you did not land on this infinite fish. It seems like this infinite fish landed on you. But I respect what you've done. I think we can learn from it. Like I, 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 I'll, I pull Mulrain aside over to uh, the, the wall of the esophageal tube and I say, Mulrain, I don't know if you're watching this, but it seems there's some sort of spark of connection between this leader and, and Sharpie, who you've been in love with. Are you, you better, I warn you, be careful. I know about these esophageal people. Yes, uh, Quark, I, I saw it too, but I, I, I can't move like she can move. <laughs> I can shoot arrows, and I can wave my hair, and I can giggle, but, um, you know, I, I, I'm going to... Uh, Concede. Ah! Don't tell him that I. Oh, your talent for passive aggression seduces me. I'm going to do passive aggression. Are you going to hear me? Oh, I, well, no, I heard the sound of someone needing more than, 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 uh, you know. <laughs> Are we going to talk about our, our actual relationship? <laughs> 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 I was just expressing that I was sad. 
Wait, I, 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 to the I, thing. I take I take our new hosts out to uh, to lunch at the local esophagus <laughs> shack while these two have sorted out their relationship with the turbines today. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, so we're at the, we're at the, we're at the village of, of these people who, who have a weird habit of making people go through a tentacle uh, stop, I guess, in order to get where they already live. Uh, uh, I mean, we, we can't do much more than that. We, we, we've done this for like a half hour. We should probably cut it off there. Right? Simon, where are your shoes? <laughs> Let's hear it for American black people. <laughs> I'm gonna give them a name, Jeff. The yeah. Capital Steps. All right, wait, wait, what's the first name real quick before you go off? We, 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 know we got Casey, we know right, Casey already, yeah, just for the sake that's of credits. That's my kitchen name. <laughs> Casey, Casey, <laughs> you are? Latia. Latia. Nice to meet you. Tori. Tori, nice to meet you, sir. Dane. Dane, I met you earlier at the bar. Welcome again. Vanessa. Vanessa. Aaliyah. 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 Andrew, thank you so much for coming out. Black people! Our salvation. There's nothing left. We have nothing left. We have nothing um, left. I, I, uh, when we were in, uh, when we were near Boston in Somerville, I had a, a camper come up, up to stage because I was a camp counselor. I have another camper here. That was a, Show off. Just saying. Awesome. You want to bring her up? I'd like to. Oh, so let's get her up. Yeah, right, bring right, right, right. Alex Fox. All right. Alex? Uh, sounds white, but fine. <laughs> Change your face. So you were, you were asking for something. Now you're being asked for something. I wanted to hear about Alex you. Fox. You wanted to hear about it. Oh, oh, Alex Fox. So, we get to get her up. So Alex, when we were in, uh, in Somerville, Massachusetts, uh, we had another one of the parents' uh, campers come up, and we talked about feminine wetness. And, uh, yeah. and, then, and then her mother came on stage, and she got bananas. Uh, it got weird. Did, uh, did Aaron dispense any uh, comfortable wisdom to you while you were at the camp? I mean, Aaron was just really my sexual education <laughs> until I was about, like, what, 14, 15? I went to a really strict school, private Catholic school, so I didn't know what sex was. And Aaron really was really eager to talk about it with his 14 year old self. That's, that's not why I brought her up. No, not but. Did she, she ever make you pass through her flesh curtains? <laughs> <laughs> no, but she did show me my first penis, so. Like, what? Wait, what? Uh, really? No, I don't know. It would also be okay if I had a penis. No, it's fine. Yeah. It would be fine. Yeah. That would be even more educated. Yeah. <laughs> Women having penises is the new black. <laughs> what we did tonight was kind of antiquated. Like we're not really breaking yeah. down any barriers. This is DC. Like we should we should have had transgender people out here. Yeah. Black people yawn. <laughs> what is this? Gilligan's Island? <laughs> Boy. Um, well, thank, I, uh, so Alex, uh, uh, <laughs> Alex uh, you were counseled by Aaron uh, when you were younger, and now we're counseled. counseled. No, and now we're all grown up. But uh, Dan and Aaron were about to talk about uh, a little spat they had today, which I know nothing about. Maybe you can counsel them right now through this. Maybe you could, uh, you can kind of uh, mediate through through their, this crisis. Yeah. Well, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Alex, okay. why don't you take the take the mic and. Uh, Walking through. Hey, Alex Fox, so we were in Somerville, and then after the show, I was talking to some fans. This is was, Dan's side of the story. I was, I, was, I was talking to two fans about glass blowing. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. But that was, it was Providence, okay. Providence last night. Oh, that's sorry, right. Yes, yes. sorry. I'm starting to be, yeah, it's all. It's all the same. <laughs> All the names have changed. <laughs> um, in Rhode Island, talking to two guys about glass blowing, uh, signing a lot of autographs, uh, you know, uh, foregoing the opportunity to write a TV show. Um, uh, it was like having decided, okay, this is where I need to be. Uh, being a hero, really. <laughs> My girlfriend comes up to me and she says, uh, hey, uh, you know, the van's leaving. Uh, I don't know uh, if you wanted to go or if you don't want to go, but the van's leaving. Yeah, 
<laughs> and I said, the only mode of transportation. All right, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll stay. Is, there, is everyone leaving? I, I don't know if everyone's leaving. There's, there's two bands, but there's another band leaving later. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. And what follows is a 25 minute conversation about when the band's leaving, when the bands aren't leaving. But I know the whole time, because I'm 40, I know the whole time that what she's saying without saying it is she wants to leave, she wants me to want to leave. But she's not saying, I want you to want to leave. She's saying everything else. And I'm agreeing with it because I don't give a shit. And I'm going like, Okay, well, you know, if you want to uh, take what you're saying at face value, if you want to get to the first van, get to the first van, the second van, I don't know. 25 minutes goes by, by my drunk estimation. Um, and uh, she kind of, she, at one point she walks away, goes like, well, I'm going to get on the first van, and she walks away. Like, Bye, I'll see you back at the hotel. Um, then she comes back, and, because there is no van, and there's no, there's, there is nothing. And she goes like, well, the van, is, there's another van, the van, 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 schedule van, 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 schedule. And I go, I, again, I don't care. I'm talking to guys about glass blowing, I don't care. She, 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 she walks away. And you, and you love glass blowing. I, well, I did that night. I never heard anything about it. It's fucking fascinating. Like, really think about it. Like, my first question was, do you just take a bunch of sand and heat it up? Does it turn into glass? The answer is no, Jeff. <laughs> yes, no. Dan, my band is living in a couple of seconds. I already know everything about, about this. I don't know, look, this is my one chance. I'm talking to some dudes about blowing glass. Uh, and uh, so, so, then, so then what happened, the thing that really causes the fight, it pops the champagne cork on the beautiful, frothy, anger bottle that is our relationship. Um, is, is, the tour manager, the guy whose job it is to tell you when and a van is coming and when it isn't, comes up to me and says, uh, hey Dan, so there's a van leaving now and there's a van leaving in 15 minutes. Which one do you want to be on? And I go, oh, I'll take the one in 15 minutes. He goes, okay. And he proceeds to go around the bar and tell everybody. And when I see him telling it to Aaron, I, I started, I, I was drunk and I was an asshole and I was going, huh, huh, huh. And I was like jiggling my ear and, she, and she's like looking at me going, what are you doing? And I, and I she came over to me and I said, I'm just, I'm just saying, do you hear how that works? You hear, you hear, you hear how easy that is? It's rude. Yeah, well, yeah. fuck you guys. <laughs> I, 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 I lost 38 minutes of glass blowing talk. Uh, all she lost was a little bit of dignity for 30 seconds. I'll, I'll, I'll try to make my version a little shorter. Um, I, <laughs> that wasn't a diss, but uh, I think so, yeah. Well, you, 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 you can afford to, time stealer. <laughs> The 38 minutes I'm sure, I'm sure you're, you're, your Justin Timberlake arm readout has fucking 100 of my minutes on it. Because I spent all that time talking about vans instead of fucking glass. I, I, I would have been, been up here tonight teaching motherfuckers how to blow a bottle out of dirt. But there's crucial shit I missed. All I know is that, is that we're fighting. Alex, Alex, uh, so jump in, mediate for fuck's sake. So it's going on. It's your her side. Yeah, it's your her side of the story. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Um, first of all, there was those guys talking to me again about blowing glass. Super cool. Learned a lot from them. I was also listening to them about glass and like the lightning striking the sand and, and that making what we think branches of glass and things. It was cool. I also had a great time at the bar. It was tired. Uh, Neil Berkeley, who's directing the documentary, was like, no, we're gonna, we're gonna get in the van and go. Sometimes like transportation has been tough and people have been left behind. So I, I was like, oh, well, I'm gonna let Dan know that I'm gonna go. Maybe he'll wanna go too. I love him, love him dearly. Went up to him and I was like, hey, but there's, a, there's gonna be a, a van going in a little bit. If you wanna get on that van. And he responded to me in a way that made me think that, he was like, oh, okay, I'll get on the van. If you want me to get on the van. Like I had said, hey, we're gonna go van? So if you want to be cool, get on the van. And he responded to me like I, I had said it that way. So I was like, oh, well, that didn't feel good. And I walked away. And because I can't walk away from things, I was like, well, no, I think that, that's, that was rude. And I walked back and I tried to explain it to him. And he, he was very like snippy with me. And then I walked back and was talking to more people. And that was when the tour manager went over and told him about the 15 minutes thing. I didn't know it. But then afterwards, he, you know, he did this. And then he yelled at me. And then I went back to the hotel room and I was crying in the bathroom. And he came in and he's like, you taking a shit? I don't know, I can't 
dancing tears. All I see is a closed bathroom door. And uh, <laughs> I start with. The I, logic. I walked. I walked out. My my face is is red, and uh, I, I I said I like what because I was sitting there crying and I was like you know I'm I feel like I'm constantly that whole fight happened because I was worried he was going to get left behind. Because call back to the mom issues from earlier. Sometimes I'm Dan's mom a little bit. I get his food together. I take care of him as best I can. And, what? That's horrible. Good job, Casey. Alex. Alex. Um, <laughs> I just found that guy earlier. He's fucking great. He checked his arms to sleep. Casey, we have a costume design alone. Sorry. So, uh, so yeah, so it, it escalated. It escalated from there, and Dan, uh, Dan tore me a real good one, and I was crying for a long time. He left the hotel room. He ran into Bobcat Gold, Goldweight in the uh, Goldweight. Goldweight. Sorry. Well, um, Bob Goldweight was in the room across the hall. So. And so he leaves and talks to him, and then he comes back, and he's he's calmed down, and he said. I'm sorry, because uh, he said a lot of mean things to me, including the C word. Um, and, uh, and, uh, Which one? Which C word? He. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, and then this morning I was still bummed out about it, even though he said I'm sorry, but he said a lot of really, really cruel things to me. It made me feel pretty uh, worthless. Okay, Alex, uh, not a chance to graduate. Go ahead and eat it. All right, well, Here's my thing. If you apologize to her, then you're admitting that you did something wrong, or at least realizing that you hurt her feelings in some capacity. Sure. Yes. So then, I mean, I think it was mostly a miscommunication between the two of you. You thought she was harassing you to get on this van, right. when in reality she was just concerned about not leaving you behind. Amazing. Right. I just think the crux of this argument. You know. So yeah. I don't he that. thought I was lying. He thought that I was bullshitting him, and I was not. And I stand by that. Things to lie about, and I don't think Aaron would do that personally. However, well, have you dated her for a year? No, I haven't. You're right. So I don't know. So I'm just saying from an unbiased perspective. However, you know, clearly her heart was in the right place if she's saying that she thinks she was going to leave you behind, and you admitted that you were wrong about something. Okay, so, so by applause, by applause, should they break up or stay together? <laughs> stay together. <laughs> That's my vote. Thank you, Alex. That was very wise. That was lovely. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, we're, we're staying together no matter what. We're staying together no matter what. That's the problem. <laughs> like, 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 we're... Yes. we're I, I, I'm not, I'm never going to leave her, and if she leaves me, I'll kill myself. <laughs> It sounds healthy. It sounds very healthy. There begin the problems when you realize that you can't be without someone. Then you go like, all right, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you, uh, yeah, why, why? So maybe that's true. Instead of thinking that I'm someone who could never go away, think of me as someone who you want to take care of and be nice to because I'm never going to go away. You don't want this this perfect flower that you have to wilt. You want to shat and nourish this flower. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, sorry. Yeah, what's this? Yeah, yeah, I got the, the, the wrong song in there. I want this one. I want. Where are you, you little bubble? What happened oh, to Goldthwait? Oh, they just wanted a nice talk and called Yeah. Time. What happened to Goldthwait is he sucked up all our stage time in two venues. For <laughs> some <laughs> reason, we went to two, Rhode Island and. Uh, what was the other place? Uh, Atlanta. Yeah, we had to do like 45 minute shows because. Right. Now. Uh, let's first of all, thank Alex for coming up and dispensing. I think it's very sound, sound counseling. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's see if we can sum this up. Uh, maybe we can heal these wounds uh, via our new anthem. Let's try this one.
house where I saw her in the prison yard. I saw her in the street, I put her my fleshy shard of love. Fleshy shard of love? I don't think the love fits the hand in the quitting process. Sorry, I got thrown off the rail. Sorry, I'm gonna start over again. Sorry, I got thrown, thrown off in Harmontown. I'm really sorry in Harmontown. But when your mama sucks dick, makes me feel like Kate's Nick. That's a guy that played the guy in Snake Eyes. His name was Nicholas Cage, and I fucked your mama on this stage, and I fucked your mama at home. I'm Ellen Page is back, and I fucked your mama while your daddy smoked some crack. And just watched cause your family sucks. That's fucked.
set the world record for people unwilling to support a stage dive. A lot of that, that was that, that, we, that chair effect of people are just like, I have a fucking chair. I'll be goddamned if I'm gonna spend my evening Captain Picard, lifting your fat, you. sweaty ass, having your shit drip down on me. <laughs> you're all dignified and you're all wonderful, thank you. Uh, again, if you want anything, I will sign it. I won't leave until every last fucking scrap of your shit is signed. That's, that's my curse and my gift. I love you all. Thank you, Arlington. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, so, you know what? Let's just hang out and do some more. Like, fuck these guys. You know, I sometimes wonder, am I being weighed down by these people? Do I need Jeff up there? Pringles dick! Do I need, yeah, yeah. What's up? Pringles dick! Pringles dick, yeah, yeah, you know. Some people call me Pringles dick, but I never really found out why. Yeah, my song. I don't really have a Pringles dick, I just keep my dick inside. I keep my dick inside a Pringles can because it keeps my penis warm and dry. Oh, shit. Some people call me Pringles dick, but I never really found out. A cardigan clad monster steals her song. <laughs> the sound of copyright infringement is rich in the Arlington draft house. Dan, let's just, uh, does anybody know the words to the Chick Chicken Noodle Dick song? I did it, right? Yeah, so you should know it by now. I think it's pretty new. Well, yeah, they should know it. <laughs> All right, so th those of you who don't know, uh, Dan, you know, I have Pringles dick, you hold a can of Pringles, you sing about Pringles dick, and you can hold anything you want up, all of you, you're all free, no matter who you are, you can hold anything up to your dick and sing a song about what it would be like to have anything in your dick. So this is about Dan holding a can of Progresso light chicken noodle soup up to his dick, and this is her. Here I am, ain't got a dick, you got a chicken noodle can. All my life, I've been putting this can inside my chicken noodle life. Chicken noodle god, come down from the mountains and chicken noodle man, you gotta work all day. Chicken noodle man, you gotta cross the river Jordan. Feed the devil soup until the troubles go away. Thank you very much. Soup to the bowl, bowl to the spoon. Spoon to the mouth, you're gonna get well soon. Okay, well, we gotta do more. Uh, let's, Take let's that home, get away. Wait, wait, Stefano. Stefano out there with the guitar? Now that there's a Greek cat with a guitar, we can bring him up. Did this show, did this show end? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah this, is bon this is bonus shit. Yeah. Yeah. Is Stefan out there still? Yeah, oh, he, he, he's terrified to come up now. This is a bonus track. Yeah. <laughs> that, the, when you listen on iTunes, you don't hear this part. This is just, uh, <laughs> I don't need those guys. Thank you, thank you. I, 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 Chevy. First of all, Chevy won't pick up. Second of all, the only thing that happens is a bunch of Huffington Post articles like, Dear Carl Chevy, Dear Barry Green. I was like, we deserve better than that. It's like, 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 such bullshit. Like, 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 how about writing articles about how awesome this show is? Once in a while. I got nothing but a microphone between you and me. I'm gonna freestyle rap like a honeybee. I'm a motherfucking motherfucking honey me. I got a motherfucking dance in my feet. I got your mama's titties too. From dance to the beat. I got my fucking shoes up down on my chest. Stupid. All right. Sorry. All right. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. I guess I get really drunk and I just stood up here and experimented with standing up here forever. And you guys just keep put. It's a weird experiment. It's a little discomforting for both of us, isn't it? <laughs>
Like, <laughs> so we just walk die? We just stay here till three in the morning? Alright, alright. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I cry uncle. I, you call my bluff. You love me. I, I love you. I'll, I'll, I will, uh, I'll sign anything we can buy or shake your hand, take a picture with you, whatever. Uh, they're gonna pick a spot for me to situate myself. And enjoy yourself. Keep coming back here to watch their awesome movies and shit. And uh, you're amazing, Arlington. Wherever you came from. God bless you. Good night.